Welcome to the Legacy Crusaders YouTube channel. This is Benji, and this is the Ask Judge Man series, where you can ask me questions in the comments of videos, and I will try to answer them in future videos. But today's episode is on activating and resolving card effects. And because we're talking about activating card effects, that means all of these card effects will be starting chain. If you are interested in hearing about continuous effects, you can actually click the video in the I card above. We're going to start off by talking about Ultimate Conductor Tyranno, a level 10 light dinosaur monster, who has the following effect. Once per turn during either player's main phase, you can destroy one monster in your hand or field. And if you do, change all face-up monsters your opponent controls to face-down defense position. That's the relevant part of the effect we're going to be discussing, because that is his activated effect that you can use during either player's turn. So some questions that come up are that people would like to activate his effect to destroy a card in their hand, not really concerned with whether or not they flip a monster face down. So the question becomes, if my opponent does not control any monsters, can I activate Ultimate Conductor Tyranno's effect to destroy a monster in my hand? And the answer is no. In order to activate an effect, you need to be able to resolve all parts of that effect. You need to have a card that you can destroy. You also need to have monsters that can be flipped face down. So in this scenario, you would not be allowed to activate the effect of Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. Now, here's a similar scenario. Your opponent controls Dino Wrestler Pancratops, which is a monster with the following effect. You contribute one Dino Wrestler monster, then target one card your opponent controls, and destroy it. So in this case, Ultimate Conductor Tyranno would activate its effect to destroy one monster in order to flip all your opponent's monsters face down. Then the opposing player would then activate the effect of Dino Wrestler Pancratops to tribute itself in order to target and destroy Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. The question becomes, do you have to destroy a monster in your hand to resolve Ultimate Conductor Tyranno because your opponent now controls no monsters? And the answer is yes. The chain will resolve backwards. Dino Wrestler Pancratops will resolve, destroying the ult uh, Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. At this point in time, Ultimate Conductor Tyranno's effect was resolving. You are required to destroy a monster, whether or not your opponent has any cards up on the field at this point. And that is because the general rule of thumb is, if you activate an effect, you have to attempt to resolve as much of that effect as possible. So in the first scenario, you were not even allowed to activate the effect because there were no monsters to flip face down. In the second scenario, you have already activated the effect, so you're required to destroy a monster, whether or not there are monsters to flip face down. The activation of the effect was legal, but now it needs to resolve as much as possible. Here's another common thing that comes up when it comes to activation legality. We're activating the Spellbook of Knowledge, which is a normal spell card with the following effect. Send to the graveyard either one spellcaster monster you control or one other spellbook card from your hand or face up on your field except Spellbook of Knowledge, and if you do, draw two cards. You can only activate one Spellbook of Knowledge per turn. Commonly, players will try out Spellbook of Knowledge in a Pendulum Magician deck, which are a bunch of uh, Pendulum monsters that are also spellcasters. So, if you activate Spellbook of Knowledge, you can try to send to the graveyard a spellcaster. So, it's not a cost, so it doesn't actually need to go to the graveyard in order to uh, select it as a target for Spellbook of Knowledge. But when Spellbook of Knowledge resolves, when you try to say in the Pendulum monster to the graveyard, it will actually go face up on the extra deck instead. Now, because of the wording on Spellbook of Knowledge, it says, and if you do, draw two cards, meaning the monster did not go to the graveyard, so you do not draw two cards. Spellbook of Knowledge will end its effect at that point. Although, you do control a spellcaster, and you can attempt to activate it. So, it is act the activation is legal because you do have a spellcaster. Where it goes afterwards is not relevant to the card text of Spellbook of Knowledge. So it is legal to activate, but all it will do is send your spellcaster to the extra deck face up, and you will draw no cards. A card that has an effect that resolves in a similar manner is Salomon Great Jack Jaguar, which is a newer card in the current meta. Um, it has an effect that reads as follows. While this card is in your graveyard, you can target one Salomon Great monster in your graveyard, except Salomon Great Jack Jaguar. Shuffle that target into the deck, and if you do, special summon this card to a zone your Salomon Great Link monster points to. You can only use this effect of Salomon Great Jack Jaguar once per turn. So the first thing about this card that's important to note is that it has an end if you do clause. So if you target a monster to return to your deck, and it is not returned to your deck, his effect will resolve without it will it will end its effect at that point. It will not summon itself. It will attempt to return the card to the deck, and then it will not successfully resolve. It will still be in the graveyard, and you can't attempt to use it again because it is a once-per-turn effect. So that's one scenario that could prevent uh, Solomon Great Jack Jaguar from coming back from the graveyard. An uh, additional way to do that would just be to remove it from the graveyard using a card like DD Crow, because there's not many ways you can prevent the card from leaving the graveyard as it is. Uh, DD Crow on the targeted monster would stop it, as well as DD Crowing the Jack Jaguar itself. An additional way to prevent this card from resolving is by removing the Link monster that it would be, have to be pointed to from the field. So if there is a Sunlight Wolf on the field in the extra monster zone, you can negate this effect, or make it resolve with that effect would be the more accurate thing to say, 
by using a card like Watt Kinetic Puppeteer to move it from the extra monster zone to a main monster zone because no longer would it be able to point uh, at the Jack Jaguar. The activation was legal, but it cannot resolve fully. You resolve as much as possible. The targeted monster in the graveyard would be shuffled back into the deck. Whether it be the main or extra deck is optional. It doesn't specify. So if the card is returned to the extra deck, Jack Jaguar would be able to summon it unless it were interrupted with the scenario that we suggested. While we're talking about Solomon Great monsters, there's another Solomon Great that also summons itself from the graveyard, which has a similar effect. It is Solomon Great Falco, Cyverse level 4 fire monster. It has the following effect. If this card is in your graveyard, you can target one Solomon Great monster you control, except Solomon Great Falco, return that monster to the hand, and if you do, special summon this card. Now, the big difference between this and the effect of Jack Jaguar is it says the card needs to be returned to the hand. So if you target an extra deck monster, it will return to the extra deck, but because it's not in your hand, his effect to summon himself will not resolve. So the activation is legal, although the card cannot resolve fully. Now I'm going to answer a few questions that came up in the community tab that were asked by others when I showed them what video was coming up next. If you want to get your questions answered in the video in question, you might want to leave comments on the community tab, which you'll see in your subscription feed if you subscribe, and maybe even click the notification bell to know when the next video is coming. Alexander Velazquez says, if a card uh, says that you can bring it back from the graveyard but banish it when it leaves the field, uh, and a card like Imperial Iron Wall is activated, can the revival card effect be used? Uh, for example, a Paleozoic Trap card. If you activate Imperial Iron Wall and um, chain the effect of a Paleozoic Trap card to summon itself, would it be legal to do? Or maybe Imperial Iron Wall is already face up and another Paleo is activated? And the answer is yes. Nothing about the Paleozoic Trap card says that you need to be able to banish it in order to summon it, so there's nothing restricting you from activating that card. Alice says, can you attempt to activate effects and pay cost even if an effect is negated, like under Skill Drain? And the answer is yes. Skill Drain doesn't say you can't activate effects. Matter of fact, I think the latest text update of Skill Drain says um, you can activate their effects, but they are negated, meaning if you can activate them, you can pay costs. Omar Farishta says, White Dragon Wyver Burster is activated when it's been used as link material. DD Crow is chained in response, targeting the White Dragon. Will White Dragon still get its search effect, or does it need to stay in the graveyard? Well, its activation occurred. You're going to be able to get the card from, uh, from the deck. There's no reason why DD Crow would negate the effect. Although, there are some rulings differences between uh, TCG North America and TCG EU in reference to rulings and uh, removing a card before its trigger is met. And this is not a case where the trigger would not have been met yet. The trigger's already been met. It's already activated. Uh, and then you're training DD Crow. So there are some scenarios where you actually could negate an effect, sort of, by activating a card such as DD Crow or Called by the Grave at the right time period, or perhaps even an Infernoid Monster or some other way of banishing a card from the graveyard before it gets a chance to trigger its effect, but that only applies to TCG North America. That's actually going to be the subject of a future video. Benjamin Falk asks, uh, you activate Card of Demise and your opponent ashes you. Can you activate another one since it was negated and it didn't resolve? Well, ash negates effects, it doesn't negate activations, and because the activation wasn't negated, um, Card of Demise was activated that turn, and Card of Demise says you can only activate one copy of Card of Demise per turn. So if the activation is negated with a different card, such as Solemn Judgment, or Cyframe Gear Delta, or Magic Drain, in that scenario you would be able to activate another copy of Card of Demise, but not if your opponent activated Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring because it was activated. So the wording on the cards, whether it says you can only activate it once per turn, or you can only use it once per turn, come into play with the specifics of that. And if you want more details on hard and soft once per turns, I'll be linking that video up above as well. Uber Ogre asks, if I have Beatrice Lady of the Eternal and I activate its effect on my opponent's turn and my opponent doesn't negate it, but my opponent steals it with mind control, does the opponent get to activate Beatrice as well? And the answer is no. Beatrice has already activated its effect, which is a once per turn effect, even though its control has been switched. So if your opponent targets you at mind control, you might want to activate it just so that they can't activate it. I have to do similar things in my Infernoid deck when my opponent tries to Widow Anchor to take one of my Infernoids. I might activate its effect just so it's been used so that my monster will come back to me at the end of the turn unless they link it away. And once again, in the next video we're actually going to be talking about SEGOC, Simultaneous Effects Go On Chain. Uh, that's the plan at the moment. That can always change. If you're interested in having an effect on what questions are asked or what the topics of the Ask Judgment series will be, you can leave comments down below. Uh, like the video, subscribe, and also participate in the question polls that I'll be posting on the community tab. The most recent one has to do with Inspector Border and a card called Downbeat, which 
I have addressed before in my video explaining how inspector border works, so it's not a very clear uh, question. Can you activate downbeat tributing cyber dragon to special summon inspector border from the deck? And you can look that up in the video that's linked above. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you guys next time.